Hey guys, well, I'm back with another tutorial for you today and I'm so excited to do this one for you. This is for anyone that wants to, I'm gonna show you how to use the home base primer to shear out your full coverage foundation. So you get the holes, you get the longevity, but you don't get that cakey finish. I'm also wanting to show you how you can manipulate product that you might not be using a lot of because it's not suiting what you're after now. So get your really expensive products out of your makeup bag and let me show you how to play along with it at home um, to change it up so you're not wasting that money. It's not sitting there um, unused. So this look is a really fresh, pretty, gorgeous look, maybe for someone that likes to wear a fuller glam, but it's more of a day look, or if someone who's a bit more natural wanting something for an event, this is a beautiful, fresh, gorgeous, glowy look that will last all day long. So keep watching and subscribe, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks. Okay, so let's get started first and foremost. I always, always do my skin prep first. Um, it's really important to get that skincare on and feeling really good and letting it um, marinate so to speak to kind of get that skin feeling really great into makeup so i'm going in with a glycolic toner i suggest there's plenty of glycolic toners out there that you will absolutely love um, this one's the alpha h liquid gold which is very popular in the market it's a great product um, you can get this from sephora um, adore um, plenty of places i know my local pharmacy sells it so now i want to show you i have thoroughly thoroughly clean cleansed skin but when you use a glycolic toner you will see your skin really starts to show off the makeup perfectly you won't have to wear as much and it sits nicer and your skin just glows but that is just dead skin like dirt in the pores things i even cleansed last night so it just shows you really where it's at so now I'm going to go in with a moisturizer. I'm going to go in with the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Cream in Light. This is a good moisturizer. It's it's expensive. Um, it's lovely. If you want a cheaper version, you can go with my trusty old. I think it's in my makeup bag. My Ember Lease, um, which is stocked at Hillary Homes. And now, absolutely, please be making sure you're using an eye cream. I obviously harp on about this a little bit, but it's really important that you are using one. This is the Ole Hedrickson Banana Cream. It's got a bit of ginseng in it, so it's really good as a morning eye cream. I have noticed, actually, as I'm wearing eye cream morning and night, it is looking so much better on my skin, and my makeup is sitting way better. When I don't use an eye cream, my eyeshadows look really dry, and it just looks really heavy and crepey. So if you've got that sort of finish with the eyelids, please make sure you're using night cream. At the start of every makeup, I always make sure I um, condition my lips. This is a really great one. This is the Lana Lips one, which is very popular amongst the people who love it. I personally, I love this one, but I personally absolutely adore this one, which is the Summer Fridays um, Lip Butter. They're both really great. Okay, so now that I have my skin prepped, ready to go, I'm gonna go in with my eyes first. I'm going to go in with the Model Rock Eye Primer. This is a really sheer eye primer. Okay, so my eyelids are prepped and ready to go. That means it'll have a really lovely foundation. I always talk about the foundations of makeup, not, not the foundation of makeup, but the foundations, like the, the stability of the makeup. We always want to make sure it lasts, it looks really great, and you're not going to do all the effort of this topical, amazing stuff and for it not to last. We want it to make sure it is, it's on point all day. So I'm going to do something a little bit different today. I'm going to keep it fresh and gorgeous, but I'm actually going to show you how I can manipulate eye shape. So I'm going to go in with this gorgeous um, eyeshadow pencil by Morphe. It's the eyeshadow wish stick in the shade Lucky Penny. I'm actually going to go in and I'm going to map out a shape that I kind of want my eyes to go in. This is a way you can sort of like, it's like a winged eyeliner to a degree. I'm taking it towards the tail or tail of my brow or my temple and I'm just taking it up this direction. It doesn't have to be perfect. And I'm just gonna take it across. What I'm gonna be doing is lifting my eye shape up. Now, if you don't have a really big area in here, you can still do it, you just won't do it as high. But can you start to see by putting this um, mapping in, it's actually creating shape and lift to my eyes. So I'm actually gonna take it across a little bit now, it doesn't have to be perfect. Don't make a perfect line. It doesn't need to be. We're actually going to be working it in um, as an eyeshadow. So I'm just using it at the moment to kind of create some definition and some shape. So you can see it's not perfect. They don't match ideally. 
but we're just getting the density of color in there so that we can start to play with the shapes. So now I'm gonna work it in. Can you see how now I'm starting to create depth and dimension through here, but keeping it light in here? This is really important. We want to keep it light in here to open that space up, but we want to kind of contour it in this zone to pull this area up and kind of essentially slim it down a little bit. I'm now going in with the Huda Beauty. Uh, this is the Khaki palette. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, lots of really great tones and actually interesting for a Khaki palette it actually has some really wearable tones in there. So I'm going to go in with these darker matte tones just to start with. I'm going to mix them together and I'm just going to pop it down in that same area that we just put the eyeshadow, but more just here for now. And now whatever's residual on my brush, I'm taking it up. So I'm not putting any extra density of pigment. I'm just simply working it up towards those lines that we just created. So now we're just using the same brush and we're just going to sort of blend it through. Again, it doesn't need to be perfect. We're simply just adding depth and dimension on this outer area. Don't worry about how clean the lines are. Here we're going to be using um, some concealer in those areas to kind of clean it up. Now I'm just going to get a fluffy brush and I'm just going to start to go into that same zone. And now I'm going to be a little bit more liberal, still being specific with where I put it. But can you see now I'm starting to blend it? like a windscreen wiper, just going in there back and forth, back and forth, keeping it to that same area. We want the majority of the pigment that's on that brush to work over that area. So once all that pigment's pretty much off the brush, we can now go in there and be a little bit more liberal with the way that we're stroking that brush. I'm now gonna go underneath my eyes with that same color I used through this little zone here. I kind of call that the really the, the, the contour zone. That's where we wanna make sure it's always matte. It's always a little bit warmer than the rest of our eye. That's where we're gonna get a lot of lift and definition in our eyes. Now I'm just gonna take that same color and I'm gonna connect that color up there underneath my eye. So it gives a nice pull in this direction. If you're wanting more of a day look and you didn't want it to be like super sort of dark or whatever, you don't like it too much product under your eye, this is where you would leave that. I just have very big eyes and very forward eyes. So I wanna make sure that I'm really, you know, contouring them. So as you can see now, I've got that really nice definition and I'm going in with that palette. And I'm going to add a bit more like depth and warmth. So I'm going to get this sort of warmer pink to start with and I'm going to press that onto the center of the lid where I want it to be a little bit warmer. And now I'm going in with that really pale pink just here and I'm going to press that through the front of my eye. So this inner corner just in here. Okay, so the guy across the, road, the street decided to mow his lawn um, first thing on Monday morning. Uh, love that. Um, I'm just going in with that same little kind of shimmery color and I'm putting it just underneath as well. This is going to really open space up. This is for, particularly this technique is great for anyone that has significantly quite tired eyes or feel very like kind of closed in that area. Using light colored shimmery or light colored mattes in this area will really expand that space open. So if you haven't done it before, please play around with it. I don't, um, as you will see now, the sort of rule of thumb is that I've used mattes in this area here and I've really pulled the tone up to really expand the space. And then shimmers in this inner corner to really kind of open that up. Going in with my trusty old lash primer. Um, I've said this a million times, but I love this. Um, if I'm yeah putting mascara on, this is absolutely what I use. I have very fine lashes. So an eyelash primer, um, and I love this Marc Jacobs one, really gives me way better hold on my lashes, a better hold on my curl. The product doesn't transfer and I find it just builds up. You can just see the difference now on just using an eye primer on one and not on the other. 
going in just to match it with the Marc Jacobs Velvet Noir. This is a beautiful mascara. Um, it's lovely, fluffy, moussey. It's great at vol building volume, but it's not clumping. It's a really delicious mascara. Okay, so now it's time to get this skin looking delicious and fresh and healthy and gorgeous with longevity and last, which I can't wait. So I'm going straight in with, you know what, the Home Base Primer in the shade Bang. This is my absolutely everyday and not because I developed it, but because this genuinely impacts the way my skin looks, feels. A lot of you have been saying in your feedback that your skin is feeling really great. I'm getting professional makeup artists saying that they're using it on their clients now and they're saying that the results are really long lasting. It just gives you the best of all the worlds. You shouldn't have to compromise on feel for longevity. Now here's a little trick. So I've got the Fenty foundation. This is the um, hydrating um, long wear foundation. This is in the shade 190. Love this foundation, think it's beautiful. Today, I would love to wear it, but I think it's probably a little bit too full coverage. So what I'm gonna show you is how you can mix your fuller coverage foundation and mix it down with the primer as a mixing medium. This is a really great way of ensuring you're not wasting a lot of product that you've got in your bag. Um, because it's not going to be suitable for the look that you're wanting. But mixing it into your foundations or your moisturizers just thins it out, just gives it a bit more glow and doesn't make it so heavy or cakey. Okay, so you can see now my skin looks really fresh. It's really glowy. It's still covered and gives me, I know this is going to hold really, really well all day, but what I'm so, so happy about is that mixing in my full coverage foundation with the primer has allowed me then to get the best of what I can out of the foundations I already have, rather than kind of going, this foundation's too full coverage, can't use it. This allows you to manipulate whatever you want through your base, whether it's a moisturizer, whether it's your front, um, your foundation, you know, all of those sort of areas. It really kind of, you can thin out your liquid highlighter if they're too much using that. It's a really great multi-purpose product. So now I'm gonna go in with concealer. Um, I wanna do something that's going to hold, um, but not to be too cakey. So I'm gonna use the NARS concealer. This is in the shade um, Creme Brulee. This is the soft matte. So I'm gonna get a fluffier brush. And I'm just going to use smaller amounts of this. It's not about how much you use. It's really about how you're using it and where you're using it. So always remember to get beside your nose in this little area just here. That area is quite dark for a lot of people and it will really open that space up. And this is where using your concealer brush to really sort of clean up that area there so it's not coming down too far. Okay, so the name of the game of this is not about how heavy I want the makeup. It's really just about ensuring that sort of smaller amounts will give me what I need from that area. I'm going in now with my Pat McGrath Translucent Press. This is in the shade, um, I think, Light. And I'm just going to pop that underneath my eye straight away. It's really important for me, and I think a lot of people, to set that under area quite quickly because you will find that you will start to move that and it's important to sort of set it down. So I also like to do it in the areas that I like to keep that tone and color the same and not change it with bronzer or blush. So that's all set in. Let's get going into some contouring blush and highlight. So I'm gonna go in with Biscuit. This is the Westman Atelier one. I've got quite a big forehead, so I need to kind of tone that in. And then I like to come in here and sweep this up again. So I go in that area. I'm now going to go in with a gorgeous blush. This is the liquid blush by NARS called Orgasm. This is a cult favorite, particularly in the powder form, but I really like using liquids on me personally. So I'm just going to go in there with that on my foundation brush and I'm just going to pop it again to kind of create lift. I'm going to take it a bit higher on my cheekbones. 
really pull me up this way. I've got very full cheeks in here, so I don't necessarily need a lot here. If you are quite sunken or you don't have much of a cheekbone, I do really advocate for putting some on your apples. It's going to really plump that out. It's going to bring it forward and draw attention. If you're like me and you um, have got plenty of things going on here and you're probably needing a bit more lift, you really want to take the direction of the blush a little bit higher. Okay, so now onto a beautiful liquid um, highlighter. This is the Danessa Myricks, um Illuminating Veil. This is a beautiful highlighter. This is in the shade Serenity. Just going to pop it this part of the cheek. Tiny bit on my nose. I don't like too much on the nose. I don't want it to look like a beacon of light, but just a little bit along the bridge and on the tip. Okay, and now onto brows. I'm just going to use a really great pencil, which is something I've been using a little bit lately, which is the Pony Magic Marker. This is just a great all rounder color. I think with brows, it's one of those things that your hair is your hair and what works for you works for you. I personally have to use um, a pencil because I have such dense hair where it is. I can't kind of fake a brush stroke or a hair stroke. So I have to use something that matches that density if I want the brows to look any fuller. If you have quite sparse hair or very fine hair, you can get away with using a pomade or a, um, a product that mimics hair. I personally, like I said, have to mimic that density across all of it in order for it to look realistic. So that's why I always stick to pencils. So just analyze your own hair and see what works for you. You might be someone who likes a super natural finish and just like a tinted brow gel. A really good trick, so I've got the color down and if it feels too dense, it's coming up a little bit denser on my camera, but if you wanted to soften off, put the color down and then reverse a spoolie, which is one of these um, mascara, like disposable mascara. You can go back in and reverse it and then, then comb it back through. And what that will do is just lift a bit of that tone off the skin, but still keep the shape. So you just go in, reverse it, push it into the skin, soften off that pigment and then brush through again. Okay, so getting onto the last bit, I'm gonna get into my lips now. So this is the KKW Nude Lip Liner in 1.5. Because I'm a blonde, my pigment in my lips, you might be not, it might not even be a blonde thing, it might be that you're a brunette and you find that you don't have much pigment in your lip. I would really support getting a nude color lip liner in a darker shade to start with, just to give you that outline. And that worked that in a little bit. And now I'm going to go in with a lip gloss. This is, I think it was a limited edition. I hope it's not because it's beautiful. It's the NARS Lip Oil in Orgasm. So to match my blush. And I'm going to work that into my lip and make sure I blend that lip line so it doesn't look so aggressive. I'm going to go in with a setting spray. You know, I love setting sprays. Really important to sort of settle any of that makeup that's sitting topically on the skin. So that's it. This is my really beautiful, a little bit sexier, a little bit more nighttime, but fresh, gorgeous pink makeup. Um, something that's really wearable for any occasion. If you are someone that likes to go a little bit more fuller in your makeup for a day wear, then this would be it. Or if this is someone that works, if you're wanting to wear something that's a lot more glam than what you're used to for an event, then this is a perfect kind of look. Uh, definitely suits for someone who likes to wear sort of soft pinks. Um, but this is a really wearable long wear look using that primer to really ensure that you've got the best hold, the best base and the best longevity in your makeup whilst looking fabulous at the same time. So I hope you enjoyed and yeah, I'll see you guys next time.